everybody, it's Suzanne in Ohio. I have a project that I tried out this past winter and I wanted to show you what I come up with. I was enamored with, um, just enthralled with these small weavings done on nothing but a piece of cardboard. So I want to show you what I made so far and one that I'm working on and a little bit about how it's done even though there's all kind of wonderful YouTube videos on it um, I don't want to recreate the wheel I just want to show you what I did so I'm going to move these two and show you this one first this is the first one I did and um, I'll be giving this to my sister because she's crazy about the ocean and a couple of these items were hers anyway mainly the shells this little snail shell and the tiny little starfish but I mounted these things on a weaving which was done on nothing but a piece of cardboard and so there's that one and then I went on to this one first doing the weaving and then adding the elements on top so the weaving acts like a background even though weavings can be a piece of art all by themselves I'm not talented enough and I just I just didn't want that I wanted something different to hang on the wall and just different and of course it's all about trying something new isn't it okay and then this is the other one I made just a simple weaving in the background and then I decorated it with one of my images now all of these have extra things added to them some of them are stitched on after the weaving is done others like this thread and stuff I wove that right in and this is what I ended up with it's my first try I'm real happy with it and I'm getting ready to do some more um, these two the mushroom and the bird will be on my Etsy site and like I said this one I'll be given to my sister she just loved it and I've held on to it just to make this YouTube video because I'm so behind on my videos but um, I what I did was put a small scrap fabric backing on them because they do look pretty messy on the back but and I put uh, a twig at the top and made a little sling strap so you can hang it and they're just real shaggy and natural looking so darn cute for a small area a little gift you could even mount one of these on the front of a journal or something like that I I made some beads you know junk jewelry type thing uh, and hung on these and then on hers I had some button like that clock and a charm that says jewel or joy and then uh, there you have it it's pretty simple it looks complicated but it isn't and the shell I glued them on I tried other things but it ended up to be better to glue them on. I used Fabri-Tac and nothing falls off with Fabri-Tac. But let me just tell you the principle that I went by and I'll show you here. This little cardboard, piece of cardboard is exactly what I used and you can find this on any YouTube video but you cut little slits on both ends and then you're going to load it with your weft thread and here's a large one to show you what that looks like so I'm going to attempt something larger so this piece is just a little well the finished piece will end up to be about the size of a sheet of paper but this is how it looks I cross it from one corner to the other and tie it in the middle and there's my beginning now this little raised piece of cardboard in here is my own invention I'm sure I'm not the only one to invent it 
but I wanted to create a little bit more space to slide my needle underneath and that's called the shed and I thought well, instead, I'll just put a strip of cardboard on both ends and raise it up a little bit so I can get my needle in and out of there now what did I use I started out with the first one using I'm just going to show you a handful all these salvage strips from fabric. My sister weaves rugs and she tears these off and she has tons of them. Aside from that, I used anything I had. I used yarn and eyelash yarn and I used um, embroidery thread. I used um, twines. I have a collection of just a bunch of hodgepodge type fibers that I get at the thrift store that I don't even know what their original use was but you can weave anything through this now bear with me just a minute I want to show you what I used to do the weaving and what I've learned so far I tried lots of things and here's my really overused needle book and I saw on a YouTube video where you can use these plastic needles oh, excuse me I got the hiccups so I bought a couple I haven't tried them yet but I can see where that would work good but I had this pack of you know upholster or um, industrial household needles you can find them in any cheap junk store or anything um, they're not necessarily good needles but it gives you a variety of all kind of shapes and sizes so this large one with the curved um, profile that I found that worked almost better than anything else number one the eye of it is big and I could weave anything or thread anything through that eye and I just simply went in and out and in and out. Now I started mine from the bottom and worked up. I don't know what's supposedly appropriate, but that's what I did. I don't even think I can get these threaded through here right this minute. I use a little fabric or a piece of thread like a lasso to put them through. But once you have them threaded in there, <coughs> excuse me it's just a matter of going in and out up and down in and out and nothing has to be perfect even if I skipped a stitch I found out by the time I did the next row you couldn't even see it so I had ideas in mind like for instance when I started at the bottom here I just wanted a neutral then I switched to a little blue and then I tried to put in mostly whites and thinking I would stitch this branch on here and put this bird on here. Now instead of that bird, you could use any printed image. Um, you could even glue paper on there. But you could use a fabric printed image of any kind like these that I'm working with. So your cardboard is nothing but just, I go with the grain of the cardboard so that when I cut my slits in the top and the bottom I'm not going against the grain of the cardboard and it keeps it nice and stiff if you put any attention on it. One thing I did have to watch out with was this tendency to want to pull. Let me widen you out here just a minute and see. Uh, as even on rug weaving things tend to, well the camera ain't going to move. Uh, things tend to want to pull in from the sides so be careful not to tighten it up out here on the sides. sometimes I would put a straight pin right there right into my cardboard just to keep it from hugging in I learned a few little things about the nuances of it but all I can tell you is it is fun 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 so here's the one that I'm working on I just finished the weaving 
I'm leaving the tails on it because when you take it, when you cut it off of this, you want to tie all these. And I just, I like the look of them left on there. You can use those to string beads on or further doctor up or add something. I'm going to use this mushroom image and I'm going to cut out this white space here in the middle and I'm going to glue it on and I'm going to put some just fuzzy fibers of all kinds to replicate brown and green moss down here. And then of course I'll probably put some dangles and and then I'll find a twig out my yard and use the top threads to tie on to a piece of wood uh, such as a twig. Now what I did for a hanger on these two, two of them, I love this. I took those scraps of selvage strips off of the fabric and I braided them. And it just made just enough chunky of a look to go along with the theme of the chunkiness of the weaving and all of that. And I just tied those onto the twig and that's my hanger. So the hanger becomes part of your art look. You know, it becomes part of the whole creation. But for if you've never tried this weaving, if you were like me and you just saw it done on camera a lot and never tried it, please try it. I think my only different twist was that I didn't want the weaving as a piece of art. I'm not that good. I just don't have that kind of decor. But I thought well, if I put something on top of it, then it becomes the background for a nice little art piece. So I really enjoyed doing those. What else am I forgetting to tell you? Oh, I have a locker hook. I have a set of three sizes for locker hooking. And that's like a a crochet hook but at the end of it at the handle end of it it has an eye and I thought that would work good too and it did and I'm going to use it more on this large one and I didn't need it on the small one but that's what I'm going to be trying when I weave this large piece now what will I put on here as an image I don't know I'm just going to get uh, the weaving started and then if I come up with an idea I'll try to put background colors in it that kind of are conducive to whatever comes to my mind. Well there you have it, a cardboard loom. Isn't that just magnificent? I just love all the things these people think of. And of course weaving is a whole genre in and of itself and I'll never be a good weaver or a master weaver. All I want to do is create art that suffices as, oh, gifts or focal points or fronts to journals or fronts to needle book covers and little things. I could even slip in a greeting card and mail, a small package. Okay, have fun. Try something new. Keep your brain moving. Remember, creative people live longer. Hope you're creating, and thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I'll get back to you. I'm getting better on responding because I am now fully moved. Other than emptying a storage unit, I am moved in, and now I'm back to YouTube and back to my arts and crafts. All right, thank you. Bye for now.